Well, Clay Thompson played the most games of any Warrior this year at 77, and he had 25 points in 20 minutes. Clay, the last couple months, it's as good as you have played, and you changed your mindset. Like, I'm going to have fun, I'm going to lean into the young guys, and you played your best basketball. Tell us about that a little bit. Yeah, you just got to realize you can't do this forever, so you might as well enjoy the most of it because it is a stressful job at times, and basketball is meant to be fun, and it was a great regular season with its ups and downs, but at the end of the, at the, end of the night, we had a great finish, and we're excited to obviously for what's ahead and along those same lines we, we've talked about the rapport you have with trace jackson davis and your great passing you had three assists tonight are you almost enjoying the assist part the playmaking part of your game a little more at this point in your career oh no I always be a bucket getter <laughs> that trumps all every time so it always feels good to make the right play though that's for sure what, what does it say to play 77 games and with the injuries that you've had and be that durable and show up for your teammates every night, Clay? That I know you didn't feel great every night. No one does no. over 82 games, but you still saddled up and played. Was that a goal to just, hey, tell Steve I, I want to be out there as much as possible? Absolutely. I mean, that's incredible. After two and a half years and no basketball to be three years removed from that and play 77 games, I'm very proud of myself for the – effort and discipline it takes to do that obviously i want to hit another level come playoff time but yeah man that's super special to be able to play that many games and lead the franchise and games played this season uh, i don't take that for granted that's an incredible accomplishment and we, we've talked about your improvement defensively as a team and obviously with the kings coming or you guys going to sacramento you guys will need your tenacious defense how confident are you guys as a group defensively right now we're very confident. We obviously need Draymond in there, but we're at, when we're whole, I think we can guard anybody very well. And we have so many great athletic players that we become very switchable and very tough for teams to go against. And we know what Sack's about. We've had a tough series in them last year, and it comes down to winning one and, and moving on. And it's exciting. So we can't wait to get up there and get situated and just have fun. You know, Clay, in the fourth quarter, when a lot of the Santa Cruz Warriors closed this one out, the bench was still having such fun. Yeah. And I think that's the one thing the fans don't maybe get. Yeah. This team's very connected. Everybody pulls for each other. This All has rookie. been a fun season. All rookie. For, <laughs> it's been a fun season for yeah. the chemistry and camaraderie you guys have had together. Absolutely. I was so proud of those guys. And you saw the chemistry between them when they were out there. Uh, they were moving the ball. They were playing for one another. And that doesn't happen without the time they put in Santa Cruz. So that was really cool to see. I'm super happy for Pat, for Gee, for Lester. Jerome to get some really good minutes and finish that and win that game for us. It's still cool to be 10 games above 500 and finish the season strong. So we appreciate them. Yeah. How proud are you of like just your effort overall this season? You guys have had to fight through adversity, you guys missing games and you come through it. Hey, maybe you're not exactly where you wanted to be at the beginning of the season, but you still have a chance at it and, and you got a, a, a puncher's chance. Yes, sir. Never cut out the champs. We're excited. <laughs> All right. Are uh, you doing the Hardwood Classic dancing like Festus anytime soon no, or not? No, no, no. But, hey, <laughs> Festus can move. I was, I was surprised. He has decent rhythm, so good for Fezzi. <laughs> All right, hey, Clay, thanks for stopping. Great season, and we'll see you in Sacramento on Tuesday yes, night. Yes, sir. All right, Clay. Pods, obviously, <clears throat> you're a rookie. You guys are headed into the play-in series, headed to Sacramento. Yeah. Do you think that being a rookie at all, do you think that you're settled in, being that you've played them so many times this season, to what it is that you got to do to come out victorious and then get the, go on to the second game, which is also on the road? Yeah, I think me and uh, Trace, our roles are pretty defined at this point. We know what's being asked of us, what we're supposed to do when we're out there. Um, no matter you know the lineup, who's where, who's with us. Um, so I think for me and him, it kind of gives us a comforting um, knowing what our role is, knowing what kind of minutes we're going to get, all those type of things. Um, and it's magnified more because it's a winner go home game. But um, at the end of the day, it's basketball just like every other game. Brenda, did you watch the Warriors Kings first round last did. season? What what do you, what were your thoughts, takeaways? Just what do you remember from watching that back? I feel like forth? that's for me kind of what um, solidified Steph as one of the best players ever. Just watching his performance, specifically in Game 7, um, crazy stuff. Uh, but I know it gets loud in that building. I know the, the fans are going to be crazy on Tuesday night, and I think we're ready for it. As another guard, what 
What do you think about how De'Aaron plays? I mean, he's mm. really a guy who finishes a lot at the rim and, and stuff. What makes it difficult to go up against a player mm-hmm. like that and just, I guess, the Kings overall as a matchup? I think it's just you've got to show so many bodies at him in transition. Um, you know, when he's making threes, it's kind of hard to guard. I think in our first game we played in October there, um, him and Steph kind of went back and forth shooting threes. And just watching that, it's kind of like, how do you stop a guy like that? Because he's so explosive to the rim and can shoot. Um, obviously, he hasn't shot that way throughout the course of the year. Um, but just knowing you got to always put two bodies in front of him to stop him. Um, if we want to win, that's something we got to do for 48 minutes. Regular season finale, you know, you've been through your first year in the league. How would you evaluate your your first season? I think it was was great. Um, obviously, I didn't play in all 82 games, so still waiting to do that so I can get the title of rookie off my back. Um, but I think I have so much more to offer, you know, in the coming years, not only in these playoffs but in the years to come. So to see that potential and the growth. Um, for myself, I think it's something to look forward to, and not only me, but to like Dub Nation in general. Anything else? Is that it? Cool. Let's go. <laughs> Andrew, if you could just sort of speak to your thoughts on facing the Kings, I mean, given the the recent history, seven game series, and played them a bunch early in the season in some memorable games. What, how do you view that matchup and what, what you will, it will take for you guys to beat them? Um, it's gonna be one of those games where, you know, we have to leave it all on the floor. You know, every, every game we've had of them has been a battle to the end, you know, a physical competitive game. Um, <clears throat> so it's gonna be a, definitely a hard fought game that, you know, we gotta leave everything on the floor. Andrew, both um, Steve and Draymond mentioned how it feels like the NCAA tournament um, when, for the upcoming playing series. How does that impact the mentality of you preparing for these com- upcoming games? Oh, for sure. We got to be ready because now it's, you know, win or go home. Um, no second chances. Um, but I'm confident. You know, the whole team is confident. Um, I feel like we're in a, a great rhythm right now you know, offensively, defensively, and, you know, just being out there and being connected together. Um, So we're all looking forward to it. What kind of message uh, would you give to some of the younger guys on the team, JK, Odds, Trace, who haven't had, you know, playoff experience yet? Um, I'll just tell them, you guys are ready. You know, you guys proved what you can do all all season long. Um, You guys fought like hell all season long. Uh, <clears throat> so you guys are ready, you know, and we expect them to, you know, do the same thing they've been doing. During the game today, was there ever a thought or was there ever like any scoreboard watching with the Lakers game or the Kings game happening at the same time? Or was it just kind of we'll do our thing and see what happens? Um, it's kind of like, you know, we do our thing and see what see what happens. You know, it's the NBA, so anything can happen. But um, it played out how, you know, we thought it would. Andrew, uh, Draymond was talking about how you guys, this familiarity with the Kings, Mm -hmm. but uh, as Kendra pointed out, uh, Trace has sort of emerged since you guys played the Kings last. How does he sort of change the equation against a team like that with his defensive presence? Oh, man, Trace on the court, you know, he's a a game changer, you know, especially with him and Draymond back there um, because he's a shot, he's a shot, he's shot blocking, he's a... He's making people adjust their shots, you know, in the paint, making making them think twice. Um, he's a he's a big key to our defense. Dre, uh, Dre, last year, y'all, y'all, uh, when you when you guys lost to the Lakers last year, it was like we've never felt that before. Like you know, even this early, what does this feel like? Um. Just like we need to go win the game. Uh, you know, I don't really, I don't know. <laughs> Just feel like we need to go win. But it's exciting. Uh, you know, you know it's do or die. Probably feels a little more NCAA tournament-ish. Uh, kind of give you that feel. But yeah, you know, we just got to go win. 
What do you think about this matchup, and, and what do you kind of think are the keys against a Kings team that has changed a little since the last playoffs? Uh, they've definitely changed a little bit. Um, you know, we I think we know this team pretty well, though, for the most part. Uh, nobody's changing that much unless you just completely change the roster, and the mainstays in their roster are still there. Uh, so they're going to run a lot of things through Sabonis. Uh, obviously, the, everything starts with the head of the snake, De'Aaron. Um, and everybody else kind of gets theirs off those two guys. Uh, you know, they're very much so a pattern team. Like, they, they got their things that they want to get to. Uh, and so, you know, going into the game and understanding that, uh, what, you know, the things that we'll be trying to take away and not let them get to those patterns. Uh, but, yeah, I mean, we, we know them well. They know us well. So it won't be no surprises. Following up on that, the past – times you guys have played them either this season or even last season it's much with the same group but trace has really emerged as a, as a key contributor for you guys at, at center the past couple months he wasn't a key part of, of those game plans how do you see him kind of helping defend a guy like sabonis um in this uh well you know um <clears throat> trace has a great length he's very athletic he affects a lot of shots at the rim uh you know sabonis does all of his damage pretty much within 10, 10 to 15 feet. Uh, obviously, he can step out and shoot the ball, but a lot of his damage from a scoring perspective, obviously, he you know gets everyone involved. Um, you know, he's if I'm not mistaken, I'm pretty sure he probably leads the team in assists. Um, and so he you know he gets everyone. But when it comes to scoring, it's a lot of it is around the rim. You know, and Trace uh, can affect some of those shots if. You know, but it starts with positioning, though. Uh, you know, Sabonis is great at creating angles. You know, so got to make sure you're good uh, with your positioning uh, against a guy like that. You know, he has all the step throughs and jump hooks and double step throughs that you can imagine. His footwork is great, so it'd be a tough challenge. He's always a tough challenge, uh, but like I say, you know, Trace got to use what he has and his strengths, which is his athleticism and his length. Draymond, it was kind of a joke at the beginning of the season how many times you saw you guys saw Sacramento. And then to know that they're your first game in this one, you, you kind of just said they know you, you know them. But as the more veteran team, does this short travel and knowing this team play in your hand at all, does it have any effect? Uh, I mean, I think the travel definitely helps me that it's an hour away, it's a quick bus ride down. Um, that helps. Uh, us knowing them helps, but on the flip side, they know us at well, and that hurts, you know. So, um, you know, overall, at the end of the day, coaches are going to put a game plan together. Uh, their coaches will put a great, great game plan together. Our coaches will put a great game plan together. But then you got to go out there and play, you know. And and you know, a lot of times you get in a in a series, and like at a certain point in the series, it's like, all right, you know me, I know you. Like, who gonna make the smart, the little plays to win? Uh, who's gonna come up with the 50-50 balls to win the game? Because you know everything I'm running, I know everything you're running, and I feel like that's what this. It's obviously, not a seven game series, but I feel like that's what this game gonna come down to. Who's gonna make the necessary plays to win the game? You, obviously, the schedule's set. There's nothing you can do about it now. But the fact that it could be on the road Tuesday, if you win on the road Friday, if you win on the road, uh, what do you think about that? You know, it sounds pretty daunting, but uh, how are you approaching just that set of circumstances? Our last eight weeks has prepared us tremendously for that. Um, we've been on the road pretty much the last month and a half, two months, uh, quite a bit. Uh, we fared pretty well on the road all year, you know, so know we're capable of going to win some road games. Uh, and when this team's back is against the wall, I like how the group shows up. So, um, you know, it's not ideal, uh, but it is what it is, and that's what we're faced with, and we want to keep playing for um, much longer into this season, so just got to go get it done. Jeremiah, in the last year or two, as the Kings have gotten better, there's been more talk about, you know, a Northern California rivalry, quote unquote. And when you play a seven game playoff series, that obviously adds to it. I'm just curious if you could speak to the what the energy, what the atmosphere is like. I mean, you guys played a very memorable game seven. Steph drops 50 this year. They overcame a big deficit. 
What 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 sort of the electricity like when you guys play the Kings the last few games? Uh, it's always a playoff type game. Like you feel that you go into um, into their arena, their fans want to light the beam and see us lose and beat the crap out of us, and they come in here we wa- we want to beat the crap out of them. A um, lot of familiarity amongst the two organizations, even beyond just us going out and playing in the money games that we've played against each other over the past couple of years. Uh, you know, Mike, Vivek, um, <clears throat> LB, like there's a ton of familiarity amongst the organization. So, um, yeah, I mean, that it kind of has brewed into that. Uh, but, you know, for us, it's another game you gotta, that we have to go win. It's not just another game in the sense of like, oh, it's just any other game. It's another game that we have to go win and we got to go get it done. Hi, Steve. How do you feel about arriving at the 10 seed? Um, well, we're happy to have a shot, you know. Um, it could have played out a number of different ways today and uh, it played out as it did, so we'll, we'll get ready for Sacramento. I mean, I'm sure you've kind of, uh, you know, I know there's been some type of uh, playoff scouting behind the scenes. What are your early thoughts on, you know, the fact that it will be Kings in an elimination game? in like 48 hours well it'd be great atmosphere um we were there last year obviously and um you know they'll they'll have their their crowd behind them and um it's nice to not get on a plane um so we'll uh, we'll take the bus up there tomorrow and um you know have a a day to prepare and be ready to go big picture uh just how would you contextualize just the arc of the season arriving to this point well i'm really uh I'm happy with the way uh, it unfolded over the last couple of months. You know, we were um, a little bit in disarray for a while uh, early in the season, uh, trying to find ourselves. And uh, a lot of guys really uh, stepped up, uh, not only on the court, but, but off the court, uh, in the locker room. Um, we have a really good connection on this team, good chemistry, guys pulling for each other, um, putting in the work. So um, I've got a good good feeling about what's what's ahead um i think we still have a chance to do something special um now obviously we're you know it's ncaa tournament we got to get out of the first weekend here and win win the first two and you know get to the uh to the first round but um we have a shot so we're excited about that back to the the kings matchup i mean you guys are very familiar with that team but what defensive challenges do, do they present especially defense has been so important well the fox uh sabonis pick and roll game is lethal and then they've got great shooting around those guys and uh you know sabonis is kind of uh the fulcrum of a lot of their offense and um we know them well they know us well and um they're they're you know great uh coached team uh mike and his staff do do a fantastic job and uh, they've been really good for the last two years for a reason. I mean, they're they're talented and um, they've got a good good formula and they're they're a tough team. Coach, how uh, important was it for Clay to have a great game like he did today, riding into the, the playing game for his you know state of mind? Clay, Clay's been great now for you know for for a while, but I really liked him. You know, playing 19, 20 minutes, getting a rhythm. Um, you know, it's. I think it bodes well um, for him going into that game Tuesday to not have to play too many minutes, but to get a nice flow tonight and knock some shots down. Steve, you, you talked about uh, the atmosphere in Sacramento, and obviously to get to that first series, now you got to win twice on the road, and you were so much better on the road this year, clearly, and you've talked about it. But I'm curious if now that the season's over, if you can sort of capture sort of what made you guys better on the road and what and how much does that matter now going on the road in the postseason I mean uh, it's it's actually more surprising that we weren't a good home team than that we were a good road team I expected to be a good road team you know we've got veterans uh, champions guys like him right there oh they need me sorry we'll see you later you, you were in the middle of a good answer um on, on the road and just how much that your success on the road matters and can translate to the postseason yeah, I mean, we, we should be a good road team. We've got uh, a lot of guys who have won, won championships and, you know, veteran players like Chris who, um, you know, are unfazed by by the road. And so, yeah, we're very confident heading out um, for these next uh, couple of games, hopefully. 
Steve, just curious, does Chris boss you around like that all the time? Yes, they all do. All of them. Yeah, it's uh, NBA coaching 2024. You just, you just do what they say. A follow-up, what was the memory that was made down there? It's just a beautiful team photo with uh, <laughs> all 75 um, front office coaches, staff. Yeah, we got a lot of, a lot of people. Very, very cool. Um, I was just curious on the, obviously the play, and there was a lot of for the fans. The, the scores are all kind of lining up. What do you think of just the the drama that was created on the last day of the regular season by the NBA and the matchups, and how much you enjoy? Well, I mean, it's I, the the play in. I think is great. I, I really enjoy the format and um, the parody. Uh, obviously, you can't uh, legislate that. It's just there's a lot of really good teams in the league. A lot of teams that are going for it. Um, so. Um, it was a pretty interesting final few weeks of the season, way more interesting than, than normal. What did you think of Kaminga's game? It definitely seemed like he was not looking to shoot a career high in assists, but I think it was zero points. Did it, that in the flow, was that something you were encouraging him to do? or just he No, just, you know? no. He, uh, he came in this morning and uh, tested his uh, back out and um, said he was good to go, so we put him in the starting lineup, and, um, you know, he just – uh, he hasn't played a lot lately. He missed missed a bunch of games. Came back for a couple, so maybe uh, he's not quite in rhythm. But um, you know, he's. Uh, I like the way he moved the ball, and as you mentioned, the seven assists, and um, so nothing out of the ordinary to me.